Hey guys, it's Michelle from Little Mama's House and I'm here today to do a quick video for you on why I traded my pochette Matisse for an artsy. So I'm going to talk about what didn't work about the pochette Matisse and what does work about this bag and also do a quick show you, you know, what fits in it. As you can hear from the resounding thud of dropping it on the table, it's full. So I do carry a lot of stuff in it and I want to show you what fits because um, it suits my needs a lot better. And I do first want to apologize because I have, of course, with all the stress going on, developed a cold or the flu. So I apologize. I have some tea here. Um, if I sound terrible, I'm just going to take some sips so I can make it through the video without hacking up along. Anyway, so here we go. Um, the Pochette Matisse. Many of you saw when I got that bag, I did an unboxing of it. And if you click the info button above, I will put a link so that if you did not see that video and you care to watch it, you can. I got that bag uh, a few months ago and I want to start this by saying that there was nothing wrong with that bag. Um, it was beautiful. It was brand new from the store, had never been carried and Veronica hit it out of the park. The bag was gorgeous. That being said, it was not for me and I feel like the biggest traitor to Louis Vuitton because I know if, if you go on Instagram, if you look up videos of the bag even just on YouTube or go on Facebook and into the, some of the discussion groups you will see that most people that's that's the bag um, and so it, it's very very popular it's sold out a lot of places now that it's come out in new patterns and prints and even in the Ampriante leather it's just super super popular and I think that's what initially drew me to the bag was that everybody had push-up Matisse it was really the like it bag to have for the past couple of years and it was just you know looked gorgeous on all these tall skinny waif like girls and as any of you who have watched me before and can obviously see me now I am neither tall nor skinny nor waif like so to me it just it looked funny on me it didn't seem like it fit right um, it looked like it was so small on me that it just made me look frumpy and weird that and the biggest problem I had with it is that it didn't fit anything and I know you know most people don't really carry a lot of stuff with them it's fine for them and it works well for them but it did not work well for me I just carry too much stuff and even it's even just on like a daily basis it's not even that um, I carry Anthony's things I try not to carry Anthony's things it's just my own garbage I mean I, I have a lot of stuff and I don't when I don't have it with me I feel like I'm missing it so for me, the bag wasn't very functional, and as a lot of you know who watch my channel, I like to use my bags. I have something like close to 30 bags. I use them all. I like to use my bags. I rotate them probably every week to every two weeks. Um, everything gets used, and so the Pochette Matisse was not getting used. I think I carried it twice, and all of the time I had it, and it was sort of because I was like, forcing myself to try to carry it to see if, I could, if it would grow on me, if maybe I decided I'd like using it. And both times I carried it, all I could think of was wishing that I had a bigger bag with me because there was just not enough space in it. Oh, excuse me. So it just was too little. Um, the, the first front compartment, I felt like if I shoved my stuff in there, I was stretching it and I didn't want to ruin the bag. I knew it had, um, mine didn't, but some of them had uh, problems with glazing and cracking and I didn't want to cause any problem that wasn't there by stretching it and overfilling it. And I think that sometimes that causes um, cracking to the great glazing or canvas edges is when you try to stuff too much into a bag. They do stretch a little bit, but it, just from the shape of that bag, my wallet was too big for it. My little makeup pouch was too big for it. Um, and so it just wasn't working for me and it wasn't practical. So one of the bags that had been on my wish list was the Artsy. And I had gone back and forth on whether I liked the Artsy, whether I wanted to add an Artsy to my collection. Um, as many of you know, the big appeal for the Artsy is the braided handle, which is gorgeous. I, of course, like many others, was drawn in by this. I think this is just beautiful. And the bag is roomy. It's big, it's slouchy, it fits a lot of stuff. So that being said, when I decided to get rid of the push at Matisse, I traded it for the Artsy. And I don't regret it. I think that I made a good decision for me. I've used the Artsy a handful of times and I really like it. It's not an everyday carrier because it's a little bit heavy and the strap tends to get a little bit uncomfortable after a while, but it does work a lot better for me than 
the pochette matisse. So I'm going to show you the artsy, I'm going to show you what fits in it, and I'm going to show you what I like and I don't like about it, and then I'll give you a couple of shots of it on. So for starters, obviously, the handle. Um, I love the braided part on the handle, and the handle itself is beautiful. Um, it's thick, it's durable. One thing that I'm a little bit nervous on it is it's really bendy. As you can see, I'm just bending it very slightly here because I don't want to overbend it. And that worries me that down the line, I'm going to end up with some sort of cracking or um, damage to it. So far, it's held up pretty well, but I've only used it a handful of times. So, you know, I'm over the long run, I don't know. I condition it very well. I condition it after I use it every time because I'm a little bit nervous of it. But um, overall, it's holding up well. As you can see, it's not, it's pretty light and patina. It doesn't have any scratches or damage or anything. It's just um, pretty and it's, it makes the bag a little bit different. It is, however, a little bit uncomfortable, at least on me. I find that the bag gets really, really heavy, really, really quick, especially with the amount of stuff I put in it. So I find that if I'm going on a really long shopping trip or I'm gonna be out for hours and hours where I'm just walking around holding it, I don't bring it just because it gets really painful in my shoulder. So I don't use this, like I said, every day. It's more of like a bag for going out or maybe going over to a friend's house or going out to dinner where I'm not just gonna be standing and walking around shopping or walking around chasing after Anthony with it. The only other thing I don't really care for on it is that there's no closure on the bag. And as many of you have know, and I've said before, I grew up right outside of Manhattan. And so I'm always sort of paranoid about somebody, not that this has ever happened to me, but of course I could probably tell you six people who it's happened to who I know, I mean, at least, but it, I'm always sort of afraid that somebody's gonna walk up and you know dip into the bag or be able to get into my bag without me knowing or me seeing. I'm totally paranoid of being robbed. I don't know why, I just am. And um, the fact that it doesn't close it um, is a little bit worrying to me. I probably wouldn't bring it, you know, to go see a play in the city. Cause just because I'd be nervous, I'd be clutching it to me, and I'd probably be afraid to put it down um, just because, you know, it's just wide open. It's not a super wide opening. It's not like a never full or a delightful where it just opens and it's like a huge gaping maw, but it does open and it doesn't close. It doesn't zip. But when you wear it, it sort of folds and it is shut like that. So let me quickly show it to you on. And okay. So this is what it looks like on. And again, I am on the shorter side, so um, it looks a little bit bigger on me than on somebody who's a, who's taller. You know, I'm under five feet, so take take a mod shot for what it's worth. It'd probably look different on almost anybody else, but. Um, it's a pretty wide base, which I like. It falls right under my arm, and this is how I carry it so that I know nobody is in it while I'm holding it. Um, I don't carry it down here. It's just too heavy, and the strap is not comfortable to do that. So this I carry like this, um, and I generally hold on to it here and just carry it under my arm like this. So I find that I don't have a problem with it tipping if I bend, which is nice. Um, with the Delightful, that was a problem with the Neverfull. Sometimes for me, that's a problem if I just bend over to pick up something Anthony's dropped or bend over to tend to him. Um, I don't like things just falling out of the bag. So this, I don't have that problem with. It's pretty evenly balanced, so it doesn't tip very easily if you bend over. So again, that is one of the things. Oh, it's rather big. And it is one of the things that I like about it. So it also comes with this cute little thing, this keychain thing. It sort of gets in my way. Um, I don't take it off, I probably should, and I probably will, but I just sort of dangle it down there. So what's nice about this, it has these big rings here and here. One of the things that I've seen suggested to do and that some people do is take a bandolier strap and attach it here and here, which could be done very easily, and fold over the braided handle like this and then carry it crossbody, which would probably be a pretty good idea. It's a heavy bag, and I think it would look great as a crossbody. So I know um, that's an option for some of you who don't like carrying a shoulder bag but want the look of the artsy. It would be super easy to attach a strap right here to the two rings. So just another option. So let me show you the inside. And it's gonna be hard to see because all of my junk is in it. But let's see if I can get it open enough for you to walk. Here's the inside of the bag, okay? And it is, like I said, it's a really big bag. It has a really nice wide base. So um, 
for any of you who watch me, you know that I always use a bag organizer in every single bag. And so in this one, I have my clover sack. And I'll just get it out. Okay, so um, I always put this in the bottom of the bag. It just gives it a little structure and keeps all my garbage neat. So this is what the bag looks like without any organizer in it. Okay, so it's sort of like one of those wide open cavern style bags. It does have, actually, which is nicer than some, it has three, sorry, it's so hard to see. It has three pockets on the inside liner. One, two, three down here. They're just open pockets. Um, and I'm sure it can fit lots of stuff. I don't use them. I just keep my um, stuff in here. Um, that way it prevents them from getting dirty or anything. But it has the three pockets there. And then on the other side, it has the same three pockets open plus a zippered pocket. So it does actually, for a Louis Vuitton, have a lot of storage in it. And if I wanted to, I probably could carry this easily without the organizer, um, but I feel like the organizer prevents it from going, doing that, which I don't like. I can't stand that. So the organizer sort of makes it stand up and gives it a little bit more structure without taking away from some of that like boho slouchiness that's nice about it. Um, but you could easily carry this without an organizer. So just to tell you my bag was made on this one, the date codes are stamped into the lining and it's on the on the side that has your heat stamp mine's made in Spain on the side that has your heat stamp in the three open pockets I was just telling you about it's in the rightmost pocket if you're looking at the heat stamp it's stamped into the lining of that pocket so this bag is a GI made in Spain and it was made in 2012 so you know it's not a brand new bag but it looks so let me show you what I'm able to fit in. So inside this organizer, and like I said, I have a million of these. This one happens to be a clover sack. But inside this organizer, I have my cosmetics pouch, which I don't keep cosmetics in. It's got extra char phone charger, headphones, chapstick, purse hooks, chapsticks, purse hooks, oh, uh, contact drops. And um, if I have my contacts in, it has my little contact case in case I need to take them out. So that has my cosmetics case. Um, I have my Chanel compact, which I turned into whoops, a pill case. Oh my God, I forgot to take my medicine. Uh oh. Um, so I have that, which I always keep with me. I'm diabetic, so um, I always have that with me. I have my four key key holder. I have my little um, envelope that I use um, to hold like my store cards, my shopper, shoppers loyalty card things. Um, carry that. I have my huge hunking um, sunglasses case. I have a pair of Chanel sunglasses and they're gigantic and the case is gigantic. It's probably about as wide as the makeup pouch. So those take up a lot of space. Excuse me. I have my um, Amelie wallet, it's just my regular wallet, and this is a longish wallet. I've tried to use some of the more compact wallets and they just don't work for me. Um, and this wallet was what first turned me off about the pochette Matisse because this was such a snug fit that I was like beyond myself because I love this wallet and it, it would fit in, but like I'd be able to fit this and like this and maybe my keys upwards like this and that was it and you know I'd be like shoving my phone in the back afraid that I was going to damage my phone or whatever it just was too small for me and then I have um my iPhone so um and this stuff is my basics this is always with me just because it's all stuff I need like I don't um even on a night out I need my medicine I need my contact solution in case something you know I've got really sensitive eyes I feel really um, lost without this basic stuff. It's not even that much, but it just was too much for the pochette Matisse. So it all fits nicely like a puzzle into my um, clover sack. And so it would probably fit in any of my organizers, but it just all fits nicely in here without um, smushing or damaging anything too much. So I'm just going to load it all back in. 
give me a second. Okay, so there is one more shot of what the organizer looks like when it's filled with all my stuff. And I even have room for a little extra in this particular bag. Like in a speedy, it would be close. This probably, um, this particular organizer is for a speedy 30. So it, I use this in a couple of different bags because there's no point in buying an organizer for every single bag when um, you can sort of make them work. And so this fits perfectly in here as well. So if you're looking for an organizer, a Speedy 30 organizer should fit very nicely in your Artsy, and it does. That's how that all fits into the bag once the organizer is loaded. So again, it's just a little bit more functional Oops. for me, for um, my particular lifestyle than the pochette Matisse was. So again, I, one of my um, subscribers asked me to share why I got rid of the pochette Matisse because when she heard that I did, she was sort of shocked. And that is why I got rid of it. Rid of it. Um, it's a lovely bag. I wish I liked it. I wish I could use it, but it just wasn't meant to be, I guess. So this ended up working a lot better. Okay, guys, let me know what you think. Do you love the pochette Matisse? Does it work for you? Do you like the artsy better? Do you use the artsy more? Um, let me know down below in the comments. Please make sure you subscribe. I have more videos coming up your way. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye.